Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Several of the men involved in a brawl in Greektown appear before a judge. President Trump adding insult to James Comey's injury. Look, he's a showboat, he's a grandstander. Explaining in an exclusive interview why he fired the director of the FBI. And breaking news in Frazier, where a school is evacuated and students and teachers hospitalized after getting sick. Thanks for being with us for the news at 5 o'clock tonight. There are questions about what made 12 students and two teachers so sick that they had to go to the hospital. Happened at Arts Academy in the woods near Utica Road in Masonic. Jermont Terry is live with the latest. Jermont. Yeah, Devin, the hazmat team did a sweep of this building and determined that there was nothing alarming inside. But let's be real, something made these 12 students and two teachers sick. But tonight they're trying to figure out what that is. Thanks, guys. Classes at Arts Academy in the Woods in Frazier canceled after students were ordered out of the building. We just all came out here, the ambulances started showing up, and people, students were being called over to be checked in. The view from Sky 4 shows the more than 300 students outside after 12 students and two teachers in one classroom on the second floor all started showing signs of illness. Started to feel the side effects of something, so they called the police were up there and they called us all downstairs. Then we evacuated outside. Headaches, dizzy, coughing, a lot of coughing. Once outside, students tell me it became clear this was serious from what they witnessed from those who fell ill. Um, I was with a couple of them right before they were taken to the hospital. Other than that, it was, they didn't do, look so good. The gas company checked for leaks and determined there were none. Decided, they decided that we would call the Macomb County Hazmat Team. Macomb County Hazmat Team is uh, investigating the building to figure out what's going on. The Hazmat Team did a sweep of the building. After a few hours, they could only say there was nothing inside posing a further risk. It leaves parents who rushed to pick up their children baffled and concerned. Yeah, it is scary. I hope they, you know, figure out exactly what the cause was and not let them back in until it's definitely rectified 100%. And the latest we can tell you that right now the school will be closed tomorrow as they will do a check of the air vent in that one classroom on the second floor. Now those 12 students and two teachers rushed to three different hospitals. We are told by the principal are all stable, but last check, none of them were released. Reporting live in Frazier, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Yeah, Jermont, I'm sure the parents are, are all gratified to know it's none of the usual suspects, but uh, aggravating to know that, it's, uh, that they still don't know what's going on. Yeah, you're exactly right, Devin. Let's think about it. They got a text. They were at work, many of them, and got a text saying, evacuation at the school, come yeah. pick up your kid. For any parent, that's downright alarming. But again, they just want to figure out what it was. Was it some pepper spray, something? Yeah. But you got a lot of people that fell ill here. Sure did. All right, Jermont. Kim? Five men police say were involved in a brawl in Greektown were in court today. Jason Colthorpe is live at Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. And Jason, this hearing has been going on some... What, six hours now? Has anything been decided? No, it's still going right now, Kim. We're monitoring what's going on inside. And right now I've just uh, learned that another detective has taken the stand. I expected this to adjourn at five o'clock, but they have just called a new detective to the stand to talk about surveillance video from that liquor store, which was right next to where the brawl happened. Now there have been six arrests in this case today. Five men are in there for their preliminary hearing all with an individual attorney, so you can understand why this is taking such a long time. Stanley Falk, Keith Harvey, Terrell Carter, Rashawn Yarbrough, and Eddie Curry led into court today to be arraigned on several charges, including assault with intent to murder for this brawl in the early morning hours of April 16th in Greektown. You can see from cell phone video taken at the scene, 23-year-old Brandon Putnam being stomped while unconscious. Today, he took the stand and testified he doesn't remember much at all from that night after a bottle came flying past him as his friends were walking. What happens after the bottle goes flying past hits the ground? I'm, I'm not sure about too much after that. I just know I was out. So. Okay. When you say, I know I was out, do you have any recollection of how you became out? No, ma'am. I just woke up in the hospital. Now, uh, the other victim has also testified today. Three police officers taking people through exactly what happened uh, that night there. Uh, and as you, they're still going, uh, still listening to testimony right now, we're going to be following this. If it adjourns or if uh, they bind, uh, find to send any of these guys on to trial, we'll let you know. Live downtown, Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4.
All right, Jason, some fascinating revelations today from President Trump and his exclusive interview with Lester Holt. It's his first sit down interview, of course, since abruptly firing the FBI director, James Comey. The president said he called Comey to ask if he, the president, was under investigation. He also said he had planned on firing Comey even without a recommendation from his deputy attorney general. Blaine Alexander has more from Washington. Blaine. And hello to you from Washington. All along, the White House had said that this abrupt termination came after a review by the Deputy Attorney General. But today, the president himself said that he had already decided to fire Comey. Today, a bombshell revelation from President Trump telling NBC's Lester Holt in an exclusive interview that he would have fired FBI Director James Comey with or without a recommendation. Because in your letter they you said I, I accepted, accepted their recommendation, yeah, well, so you had already made the decision. I, oh, I was going to fire regardless of recommendation. So there was it is a direct reversal from statements by the White House, even his own vice president, who said the president acted at the direct recommendation of Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. I think I think his recommendation, again, it was extremely clear. Um, the president, though, makes the decision. The buck stops with him. President Trump also revealing he personally called Comey regarding the investigation. And did you ask him I under investigation? I actually asked him, yes. I said, if it's possible, would you let me know, am I under investigation? He said, you are not under investigation. It comes as now acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe appeared before the Senate Intelligence Committee taking what would have been Comey's role at a planned hearing. McCabe pledging the FBI's investigation into possible Trump campaign ties to Russia will not stop. There has been no effort to impede our investigation to date. You cannot stop the men and women of the FBI from doing the right thing. The president today repeating his assertion Comey was not doing a good job. He's a showboat. He's a grandstander. The FBI has been in turmoil. You know that. I know that. Everybody knows that. On Capitol Hill today, strong reaction to that interview. Senator Mark Warner saying he is offended by the president's comments on Comey. And the White House had said that Comey had lost the respect of the rank and file members of the FBI. But today, acting director McCabe refuted that, saying that Comey had broad support within the bureau. At the White House, Blaine Alexander, Local 4. All right, Blaine, you'll see much more of Lester Holt's one on one interview with President Trump, 630 NBC Nightly News here on Local 4. Okay, so uh, time to get a check on the forecast. Not too bad of a day. Not today. bad at all. And now heading into Mother's Day weekend, Ben. Yeah, and oddly enough, it only gets better from here as this is going to be some of the coldest air that we're going to have to contend with. We're at 64 right now. The, the clouds have thinned out just enough to sneak us into the mid 60s, uh, but they will continue thinning tonight. So that means we will be dropping into a cool evening by 10 o'clock down into the 50s and looking at overnight lows tonight in the 40s. But believe it or not, we've got 70s and and 80s in the seven day forecast. We'll check that out for you and take a closer look at Mother's Day weekend. Plus your four zone forecast all coming up in just a few minutes, guys. OK, Ben, we are now into the third day of testimony for Daniel Clay. He's the man accused of killing Chelsea Brock. During today's hearing, the jury watched video of detectives interrogating Clay about Brock's death. He says he was choking her while the two had sex. She went quiet. So I thought at first she was like holding her breath or something, or you know, because I wasn't choking her that hard, I didn't think. And then, like, she just stopped breathing. And I stopped. Clay says he tried breathing into Brooke's mouth, but she never regained consciousness. He is charged with murder. The defense insists that Brooke's death was an accident. Testimony will resume tomorrow morning. Two Detroit police officers were injured in a car crash this morning on the city's west side. It happened on Greenfield near Curtis. The officers were headed southbound when a 66 year old man driving northbound made an improper turn in front of their squad car, causing the crash. Both officers and the other driver were treated for injuries, though those are described as minor. Police say that other driver did not have a valid driver's license. A renowned Detroit artist is set to present his biggest artwork to date here in downtown Detroit. This is fantastic. Work will soon get underway to paint a new mural created by Detroit artist Charles McGee. The 92 year old is known for his geometric designs. McGee's career spans some 70 decades. The new mural will be titled Unity. It will be painted on the side of the 28 Grand Loft building on West Grand River and will be 118 feet high and 50 feet wide. It will debut sometime in June.
good sized canvas I to think work so. with. Yeah, plenty <laughs> we'll big. We'll be able to see yeah. that. Plenty good. Uh, still ahead, a robbery at a local home ends with a loss that can't be replaced. In fact, two of them. Sean? It's not safe for kids. A man sick and tired of speeders up and down his street has come up with his own unique solution, and I'm going to show you. In Clinton Township, a man breaks into a really unique spot, a indoor airsoft range, and the entire thing is caught on camera. Now Clinton Township detectives are hoping you'll be able to pick him out. Tonight, new at 6. Five people killed in a fiery crash. New at 6, the driving history of both drivers and why neither of them should have been behind the wheel in the first place. Also, Macomb County clerk attacked what this man did to a clerk moments before he ran out of a store with $400. Well, tonight, Clinton Township detectives are hoping you might know who this person is. He broke into a shooting range on Gratiot near 16 Mile Road, and as Nick Monticelli reports, he took his time doing so. Well, good evening. Whoever broke into the Motor City Airsoft range here in Clinton Township did so by just ripping open the doors. They're going to fix that. But in the meantime, this isn't necessarily about how much they took. It's about the quality of life and somebody just being violated after somebody breaking into a business. They did it in broad daylight, 7 a.m. You'd think it'd be at night. Stephen Stone opened Motor City Airsoft. It's an indoor airsoft range using these small pellets. He has never had a problem here until now. Security cameras inside of the business caught this robber breaking in at exactly 7 a.m. on Tuesday the 9th. He appears to be wandering around, almost like he's shopping, not knowing what he wants to take. One minute later, he grabs his first item. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, he picks up that big box. It's a remote control helicopter. Another two minutes go by, and now he has his hands full. A box with combat boots under his arm and a shopping bag filled with camouflage shirts and pants. And it appears he reaches into the cash register and snags about $100. All of it happened in just a few minutes. And especially, I mean, the stores next door were opening, so they had employees coming in, and he was just in here walking around. I think he kind of wanted to make it look like uh, he was just somebody that was here, maybe cleaning up or doing something. Stone, though, and the Clinton Township Police Department are confident someone will know who this is because of his mannerisms and the way he walks and his unique jacket, pointing out that old English D with the devil's tail and all. He grabbed about $800 worth of items in cash. But Stone says it's not all about the money. It's the principle of it. After I got out of the Army, I decided that I didn't really uh, want to work for anybody anymore, so I decided to open up a place that still was kind of military-based. In Clinton Township, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. General Motors is extending a warranty on thousands of older model cars and SUVs. Comes after a federal investigation into nearly 130 complaints about low-beam headlights suddenly going dark. GM notified dealers on Tuesday it will now guarantee headlight control modules for 12 years or until 150,000 miles is reached. Vehicles getting that warranty extension, the 2006 to 2009 Chevy Trailblazers and Envoys, the 2006 Buick Rainier and GMC Envoy XL, the 2006 and 2008 Pontiac Grand Prix, and the 2006 to 2008 Buick LaCrosse. Really nice day as we get yeah. closer and closer to the weekend. You mentioned we've got a lot going on. Mother's on Day, things, uh, race for yeah. the cure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All so. many, many that would enjoy nice weather. <laughs> yeah, and after the start to this month, it isn't going to take a lot to keep people happy. It's true. <laughs> this is, yeah. is the 11th day of the month. Ten of them have been below average. Yeah. Oh, wow. The yeah. first day was the only time we got above it, but we'll make up for that. Uh, not necessarily today. We were still technically three degrees below average. Uh, we're at 64 right now, but look at how dry that air is. 38% relative humidity, and we do have an east-northeast wind at 9. The clouds are going to continue thinning tonight, so we're in for a cool finish. Tomorrow, when the clouds return, unfortunately, we may not get to 64, but beyond that, uh, that uh, temperature curve is pretty steep going upwards in one direction. So you can see how the clouds have thinned just early enough to sneak in those mid-60s here this afternoon. Uh, as we get into the next few days, there is not a whole lot of chances 
chances of rain and we'll run that down for you in a few minutes. Only places that are showing up here in the 50s are up to the north 58 in Sandusky 57 also in Port Huron. Most of the area is in the low to mid 60s right now, so it's slightly below average, uh, but we're getting there and you can see beyond that as we go look back to the west, there are some showers here over on the other side of the lake that is not going to be impacting our weather as we get through the next few days. Clouds do start returning tomorrow, so it's not going to be as bright. We will be seeing mostly cloudy skies through the day, and then as we get into Saturday, generally dry conditions, and if we're really splitting hairs, I think the only possible chance of a shower is going to be in the evening hours. Even that, if it shows up, looks like most of it's going to miss us. I still think the vast majority of the two day stretch over the weekend is going to be dry. Mother's Day weekend looking dry as well. Highs both days, Saturday and Sunday, getting close to 70 as we get into the afternoon. But here are the lows tonight as those clouds continue to thin. We're dropping down into the 40s, 45 here in the city, 44 for some of our northern suburbs. South zone temperatures generally the same with some of the warmer numbers out here in Monroe County, cooler numbers further out to the west towards Lenaway County. And in our west zone, all 40s here as well. 40 in Fenton, Flint, you'll be at 41, Novi at 44, and Canton at 45. And we will escape the 30s. Nobody's fallen that far, but it's going to be close here in Lapeer County, right around 40 for lows overnight tonight. And your forecasted highs tomorrow, just slightly lower than what we had today at 62, with plenty of clouds around, especially for the first two thirds of the day. Look at the weekend. Not too bad, but next week looks even better. 70s Monday through Wednesday, and Thursday's high. Hold on to something here. 82 degrees in the afternoon. I mean, just that's what we've been waiting for. A remarkable for. Uh, yeah. stretch of weather yeah. and really no rain other than that slight chance on Saturday. Hey, OK, not too bad. A 13 year old girl escapes a terrifying situation inside a house on the west side of the state ahead at 530. What she says happened after someone snatched her from a city bus stop. Everett. This is more than just artwork. It's part of a multi-million dollar company based right here in Metro Detroit and was just recently featured in Forbes magazine. I'm Evron Casame. Coming up, I'll take you inside their small business and share their secrets to success. A local small business owner is celebrating a big honor. I love what these guys do. She's featured in a national publication as one of this year's top 25 small giants. Our Evron Casame takes us inside Matawi Tile Works. Matawi Tile Works was started by Noelle Matawi about 25 years ago in the garage of her home. Now she has nearly 40 employees, makes millions in revenue. Oh, and you might have recently seen her in this month's Forbes magazine. I'd heard about the list and I was certainly hoping to make the list, but when I discovered that I was on the list and saw the other companies on the list, mm -hmm that blew me away. It's a dream come true for Noelle Matawi. Her business, Matawi Tile Works, is one of 25 of Forbes magazine's Small Giants 2017, America's best small companies. Our product is superior. Our customers adore us. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're respected in the industry. Our employees are the envy of many because we know it's a healthy place to work. As soon as the magazine came out, my staff, they pulled together a secret celebration for me. It's quite the honor for the Michigan grad who kept her business here in Ann Arbor. Matawi Tile Work specializes in custom ceramic tile for home improvement and tile art like what you see here for home decor. In the beginning, I was just trying to make a living as things started working out really well. I have to admit I've gotten more ambitious. Noelle never imagined turning a fine arts degree into a business that does three million dollars a year in revenue. She had this tip for operating a successful and profitable business. If I had to say one thing, I would say perseverance, hmm. dogged determination. And there's one other thing which is a willingness to face the brutal facts. Now, after 25 years in business and a feature in Forbes magazine under her belt, Noelle told me it's time to take a break. She plans a vacation this summer in England, a vacation that's clearly well-deserved. In Ann Arbor, Evron Casimi, Local 4. New at 5.30. We're on Detroit's east side. Too many speeders up and down a side street has one man saying it's not safe for kids and he's come up with his own solution. I'll show you exactly how he's slowing the cars down. If you live in Michigan, you know potholes can cause major damage to your car. Now help me, Hank, talking with the experts, showing you what you should do to protect your vehicle. The broken glass and this damaged back door is still sitting in this homeowner's backyard after thieves came in 
taking something precious. Some people look at them as, oh, they're just dogs, but when you're taking care of them like children, they're not just dogs. And it turns out this was not the first time. It's dinner time. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5.30 starts now. Good evening and welcome to Local 4 News at 5.30. Topping our news, two precious family pets gone after a break-in at a Detroit home. Well, the search is on at this hour to find the thieves who broke into a Detroit woman's house. Losing material things is an awful thing in itself. Losing something like a pet? Jermont Terry shows us why it's not so much about all of the material things that are gone, but also gone to beloved dogs that are now missing. This homeowner got a call from her security company telling her to rush home because something wasn't right. And when she got here, boy, was she surprised. This is what's left of her back door. It was kicked in by some robbers, but it was what was taken from inside the house that has her heart broken. Kim Johnson is in disbelief someone broke into her home on Detroit's west side, stealing TVs and electronics. To me, it's an indication that you've been in my house before. If you knew to come through the side door, avoid the camera. But Boston and Shadow seen here cannot be replaced. The two dogs have not been spotted since the robbers kicked in the side door on Sunday morning. It's unclear if Boston and Shadow were stolen in the break in or wandered away. So a part of me wants to believe that they took them. And I don't understand why. And it turns out this is not the first time thieves targeted Kim. Two and a half years ago, someone broke in and get this, stole two more dogs. So that's what hurts the most because I already took a set of pets. And then I finally mustered up the nerve to love on some other pets. And then you come and take those too. Kim's doing her part to stay optimistic. I'm moving to Detroit Animal and Care Control. There's a new lock on the storm door, and Kim is hoping it keeps the crooks out. Some people look at them as, oh, they're just dogs. But when you're taking care of them like children, they're not just dogs. And Kim is hurting tonight. Now, she's, as you mentioned, doing her part to try to find Boston and Shadow. She's checking all the local shelters, but has had no luck since Sunday. Interesting enough, she left her house Sunday morning. Ten minutes later, she got that call from the security company. And when she left, she spotted a guy in the blue Passat sitting outside the house. He did not have a license plate on the car. She said she wished she had step, stuck around and maybe came back in the house. Maybe tonight she would have Boston and Shadow in her arms. This is an open investigation. Reporting live tonight, Jermont Terry, Local 4. All right, thank you, Jermont. A lot of parents wish drivers would slow down in their neighborhood, and so does at least one uncle. Sean Lay is live this evening with what a Detroit man is doing every day to try and make people think twice about speeding. Sean. And he's doing it whether police or the city like it or not. Look, we're on Holcomb. East Forest is down here. You've got plenty of kids that live here. You've got cars that are using Holcomb as a drag strip. So Donald Brown lives here. He's putting his foot down. He's putting these cones down. He's trying to get people to slow down. Somehow it's got to stop somehow. Everybody needs an uncle like Donald Brown. We have kids out here that that like to play, ride their bikes and skateboard. Donald picks up his nine-year-old nephew, Diavante, from the school bus in the afternoon. I was right there. And for kids, there's nothing better than riding bikes after school. For Donald, it's a constant worry. Drivers going way too fast down Holcomb at East Forest on the city's east side. Speed limit is 35, and I see people going up 50 and don't even stop at that stop sign. What really shook Donald up? Don't, don't panic, they coming. This deadly crash April 13th when a man speeding in a Camaro on the west side crashed into a car of young people, killing two of them. I'm going down the street with it. Donald is taking matters into his own hands by putting out cones in the street every afternoon. I had to keep doing this every day, I'm gonna do it. Like it or not, it's his way to slow drivers down and it's working. I see some cones. I said, it's enough for me to have at least one from here. Okay, I'll grab one. It ain't stealing because it's enough. He's afraid a child on a bike might roll into the street or a speeding car might jump the curb with tragic results. There ain't nobody else gonna do it. Who else gonna go out there and go, oh, I'm gonna get a cone or I'm gonna tell somebody to stop, slow down. I tell people slow down, they're they gonna keep doing it. 
Donald says he's going to slow those cars down himself with his cones. Look, we've been out here all afternoon. Cars are actually flying down Holcomb. Now, many have stopped or slowed down to get around these cones. Others just kind of blow by them in defiance. But Donald says they're working, and we've seen some evidence of that this afternoon, Karen. All right, Sean, so what do police say? I mean, if people have similar issues with speed on their street, what are they suggesting folks do? Yeah, I just got off the phone with the city. They're saying, look, if you have issues with speeders on your street like Donald does, call your local precinct, call your neighborhood police officer, try to work with them, see if DPD will set up a traffic uh, enforcement situation for you to send the message to slow those cars down. Okay, start handing out those tickets. All right, thank you, Sean. In Kalamazoo, a man is accused of abducting a 13-year-old from a bus stop and sexually assaulting her. The victim called 911 Thursday. She told dispatchers she was being held against her will in the upstairs of this house. The teen said she had been waiting at a bus stop when a man approached her and forced her into his car. After her call, police were able to quickly find the house, and inside they found both the victim and the man now described as the suspect. Officers arrested 39-year-old Dontrell Williams being held on a felony charge of sexual assault and a charge of kidnapping. Now a local 4 News update. The Detroit police officer who was shot in the head last Sunday on the city's west side still listed in critical condition. You recall the suspect in this case was shot and killed by officers. According to the police chief James Craig, the officer is still in a medically induced coma. Doctors are still struggling to ease the swelling in his brain. In St. Louis, a school bus driver and 13 students were taken to the hospital after crashing this morning. This is where the bus came to a stop, buried behind a wooded area. Police say the driver was trapped for a while and at least one student was ejected from the emergency exit. One of the kids was ejected off out of the emergency door uh, somewhere from the point when it started going down the embankment to where it came to, the bus came to rest. The bus drivers, you know, we got to give her credit because you imagine what she did keeping that bus upright? I mean, that'd be tough to do. So she kept that bus upright from overturning. 13 children suffered minor injuries. Their driver had moderate injuries. Officials in Missouri say the crash happened when another driver lost control. The school bus driver was trying to avoid that vehicle, but went over the guardrail. News from Ohio, chaos in an Akron courtroom as emotion gets the better of a victim's family member. On Wednesday, James Henderson pleaded guilty to killing his best friend and four others. This is a case from 2014. Partway through a victim impact statement, Delray Sanders, whose sister was one of those murdered, lunged at the killer. The courtroom had to be temporarily be cleared. Henderson was brought back into the courtroom and then sentenced to life in prison. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos is responding today after facing protests during a speech yesterday. DeVos spoke at Bethune-Cookman so University for a much. commencement address. During the speech, students at the historically black college turned their backs on her. DeVos tweeted about the protest, saying, quote, I have respect for all those who attended Bethune-Cookman, including those who demonstrated their disagreement with me today. She then posted a picture from the event, saying, quote, while we may share differing points of view, my visit and dialogue with students leaves me encouraged and committed to supporting HBCU. If you were someone you know has ever caught uh, the volunteering bug, you know how powerful that can be. Well, as two local friends are learning, giving back can give way to some really big ideas. Mitch Album has the story of Rod Monson and Larry Gardner in this week's Heart of Detroit. Rod Montz was working as a journalist when a story came across his desk that would change his life. It concerned a nonprofit called Volunteer Impact. They were a group that connected volunteers to nonprofits who needed volunteers. And then when I talked to some of the volunteers, I was impressed by how much they enjoyed being able to give some of their time. And I decided to try volunteering myself, and that really led me on a journey that's kind of changed my life. Rod has been volunteering at area soup kitchens and shelters ever since. He recruited friends and co-workers to volunteer as well, including Larry Gardner. He and I struck up a conversation about photography. Collectively, we decided to do this coffee table book mm -hmm. and sell the book and give the proceeds to Cots. Rod and Larry set out to tell stories. With the support of Cots, they interviewed residents over the last 15 years, bringing their struggles and challenges to light. What do you hope the photographs get across to people? Essentially, I want them to put a face to this story so that they understand these are real people. 
who have endured, in some cases tragedy, in some cases misfortune, but they are real people who are not unlike you and I and understand that any of us could end up in that situation. I have gotten immeasurably more out of community service than I ever could have imagined. I can't imagine not doing it now. What started as an assignment has turned into a passion. Rod Montz and Larry Gardner are capturing the essence of the human spirit right here in the heart of Detroit. Now, Rod's talking about that. that's what so many volunteers say. They go in thinking they're going to do something for somebody else and it ends up being really they're doing a lot for themselves, yeah. I yeah. love the idea of the coffee table book because then that opens up the conversation to people even who more. aren't volunteers. Exactly right, yep. Uh, well, witnesses say they couldn't believe their eyes. Still ahead, why this accident turned out to be much more serious than it appeared. Plus, they're calling it a second Campus Marshes, and we're getting our first look at the restaurant that will anchor it downtown. Hank. Pothole problems, they're inevitable for most of us here in Metro Detroit, but now help me Hank showing you how to save time, money, and how to protect your ride. And a reminder not to miss this week's Saturday Night Live. Melissa McCarthy will uh -oh. be hosting. Wonder who she <laughs> might play Saturday night, 1130 here on Local 4. I teach because... New at 6. What if your place of business told you to stop wearing cologne, stop wearing hairspray, even stop using air freshener? What about the, the people who are coming in and out of the court? Like, are we gonna soon be not allowed to wear fragrance? A new fragrance policy inside one of Detroit's busiest places that you may be visiting. Coexist, coexist, coexist. And by the way, stop parking on the queue line tracks. You won't believe what happened today, or maybe you will, when I confronted a bus driver waiting for kids on the tracks of the queue line. All right, Paula, we have been talking potholes all mm -hmm. week. We've talked about where some of the worst ones are located. We also had a fascinating look, I thought, from Steve uh, yesterday about why our Michigan roads are in the shape that they're in. Yeah, and a lot of it has to do with how much money we're willing to willing spend, to spend on our yep. gas and the taxes. So now, Hank Winchester is finding out what the cost is if you happen to hit one. If you're driving along and your car hits a pothole just right, you're likely going to do some big damage, ending up in a place just like this, costing you big money. Tonight, advice from the experts. See all that movement in there? So it shouldn't be rocking around like that. It certainly should not be rocking around I like that. I shouldn't be able to move it at all. That's damage to a van's wheel, all thanks to a pothole on a Michigan road. Here at Automotive Authority in Troy, Tim Anderson sees this kind of wear and tear all the time. And the fix is not cheap. For the pieces this vehicle needs, it's going to be $900. And that's just for the one part needed to secure that wheel. Hitting a pothole can do big damage. It's going to damage a tire. It's going to break a wheel. Not just bend a wheel, it's going to break a wheel. Um, numerous front end pieces that can be damaged. You'll end up spending more than $1,000 in repairs. And it'll cost you stress and time away from your job. So how can you minimize the damage if you hit a pothole? Keep your tires at the right inflation. Um, Underinflated tires hurt your reaction time. Over, Overinflated tires, you run the risk of damaging the tire or wheel if you do hit a pothole. Some other tips, just good reminders. Keep enough space between you and the car in front of you and clean your windshield and wipers so you can see potholes coming. If you can't avoid hitting one, what should you do? Slow down, but as you're going over it, don't, don't brake. Just let, just let your car coast over it because you can also do damage to your brake system. You heard right, slow down before you hit it. But as you go over that pothole, let off the brake and coast over it. MDOT may also pay for damage if you hit a pothole on a road controlled by the state. But collecting from the state can be tricky and time consuming. And we have more tips from the experts, things that you can do to protect your vehicle during this very busy, sometimes costly pothole season. You'll find all the information on the consumer page at clickondetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. All right, we always appreciate the help, Hank. When you see a pothole, let us know. Head to our Facebook page or clickondetroit.com slash potholes. Local 4 News Today's Pothole Patrol will highlight the rough roads to avoid on your ride to work.